Black Mesa is a 2020 remake of the original Half-Life that came out in 1998. And if you've seen my last video on it, you know that Half-Life really wasn't that big of a deal. Yeah, it was just some small indie game that didn't hit too well in the market, but it did gain a small cult following that still lives on to this day, so it's safe to say that it really wasn't that important. You know there might be some dumbasses out there that didn't pick up on my sarcasm? <laughs> Anyways, Half-Life is an incredibly influential game, and I think it's safe to say that it sparked the modern shooter genre as we know and love today. Now back in 2005, a mod for Half-Life 2 was in development, and this mod was called Black Mesa Source. It was supposed to be a recreation of the original Half-Life in the Source engine. Then a few years down the line, it was 80% finished, and then a year after that, it was ported to Steam in 2015. And the Crowbar Collective spent the remaining five years recreating the Zen chapters, which in the original game aren't all that great. Half-Life 1 is still a fantastic game, and it still holds up in my opinion, but Black Mesa is here to rekindle that spark, more or less. That's right, kids, today I can't tackle this video alone, so I brought my colleague, ZTH44Gamer, to help me out with the video. Z, welcome to the show. Okay, this is ZTH404 here, and I would like to start off with the fact that I've played a ton of games, over 300 to be precise, and the Half-Life games stand out as legends in that group, but today we are specifically talking about Black Mesa. Indeed, my guy. Black Mesa is a game that seriously surprised me with how good the quality actually is. I might even go so far as to say that the Crowbar Collective have made a better Half-Life game in the time that it took Valve to make a VR-only game that stars the character who gets a lady boner every time Gordon kills something. When it comes to the Crowbar Collective, I think they are true fans of Half-Life, in which they are able to make a game that beats Half-Life by a million and a half miles. Because in this case especially, it takes true fans of something to make it even better. I mean, they took a revolutionary game and modernized it in a way that is still crazy amazing, even using the same concepts and generally the same story as the original Half-Life. Well yeah, it's a remake. Also, can I get this out there that there's a difference between a remake and a remaster before I hit somebody in the face with a crowbar? May I ask what the difference is? Okay, so a remake is a complete redesign from the ground up, remaking assets, levels, music, and gameplay. While a remaster just touches up only the visual and audio quality of the game. If you already knew that, well, we should be friends. So that would make Half-Life Source remaster and Black Mesa remake then? That is correct, but Half-Life Source is an incredibly buggy mess, and I don't think anybody should ever waste money on that garbage, unless it's like a 99 cents on Steam. But anyways, Black Mesa is a fantastic game on its own merits, and I think it surpasses the original in a lot of ways. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm Skeptical Rowan. And I'm CTH404Gamer. And this is Black Mesa. So, if you've played Half-Life 1, you know the plot is as such. You play as everyone's favorite theoretical physicist, Gordon Freeman, where you're on your way late to work at the Black Mesa Research Facility in New Mexico. Then after a nice train ride, you get to the Anomalous Materials Laboratory, and from there, you make your way to the test chamber after obtaining your... THEV Mark IV Protective System. Then, Gordon makes his way to the test chamber, meets up with Dr. Kleiner and Eli Vance, where I'm glad the Growbar Collective decided to make sure these characters were in fact canon when they had a reason to show up in Half-Life 2. Good job. Anyways, after pressing some buttons in the test chamber, you end up fucking the entire planet when you push a weird alien crystal into an anti-mass spectrometer. Then, a crazy laser thing causes the entire resonance cascade. After all hell breaks loose, it's your job to make your way to the surface to contact for help, but along the way, the military shows up, and their intentions are, well... God, Jesus! To be fair, you did kind of start an alien invasion, so can you really blame them? Okay, so if some random scientist guy caused an alien invasion, doesn't mean I'd shoot him if he asked me for help. I would. I guess Half-Life is preaching that government makes the military do immoral things for the sake of it. Then it becomes all-out warfare between the aliens from Zen, the military, and Gordon Freeman. Just in case you haven't realized at this point, that's you. Once you make it to the Lambda Complex, you make your way into the border world Zen, where you do a bunch of bullshit and then kill the Nylon. Just as you escape and see the destruction, a mysterious man interrupts the scene. Yep, the G-Man is back, kids. Or... It's his first time show- anyways, this ending scene is great. It's beautiful. Okay, so let me get my thoughts more or less on the story so it's not just a plot summary. 
Yes, it's a faithful recreation of the original storyline, and I'm glad it doesn't retcon the characters made in Half-Life 2, and it does make an effort to establish the Half-Life universe. However, the story isn't anything new, even back in the 90s. After all, Doom did something extremely similar to Half-Life as well. But the way this story is told is absolutely fantastic. You never leave the perspective of Gordon Freeman. The entire story takes place through your eyes and your eyes only. There are no cutscenes, and the Cobra Collective did a great job of keeping the original feel of Half-Life intact. You know something about the Half-Life series that is true, but a lot of people won't really admit, is that the shooting itself, it ain't all that great. Don't get me wrong, the combat is enjoyable and the guns feel powerful and are satisfying to shoot, partly because of the sound design, which brings me to a proverbial climax. <laughs> Yep, I love to hear the sound of a beautiful shotgun as I blow the heads off my many foes. Not literally, of course, since you can't actually blow the heads off of enemies, but eviscerating them is still an option. But most of the combat, especially with the military, is kind of bullshit hard. The military units are smart cookies, but their strength comes from more so their numbers and their actual intelligence. Fighting the alien enemies is fine because they don't use hit-scanning firearms. Back to the point of the military, I understand they are probably wearing bullet resistant armor, but seriously, it takes far too many bullets to kill them. Don't even get me started on the assassins. I'd agree with that. These guys take way more punishment than they do in the first game, often making some of those combat scenarios more of an annoyance. The game is relatively easy until the military shows up. The combat in this game feels average. I mean, everything else in between the combat is really neat because combat is nothing more than taking pot shots from range at each other. But that ties in more with the level design, which we'll cover in a bit. Agreed, I'd say the best part of the combat is the presentation rather than the actual fighting. I mean, that's always how combat in these games has been, but you're not really supposed to approach these situations like a badass superhero. You're supposed to approach them how a theoretical physicist would. That's why these games are so unforgiving to the player. I enjoy the shooting, but it's nothing more than the bare minimum to call it a first-person shooter. Fair point, and perhaps that's part of the charm, since you are more equal to the enemies than you are in most other games. Also, some of these weapons just feel off. Like, the crossbow is way slower than in the original, and some of these weapons have altered behavior. For some reason, the secondary fire on the Glock just feels less useful to me. To be fair though, I noticed that the original crossbow could fire mid-animation. But why wasn't the pullback speed increased in Black Mesa? The crossbow is slow to use and it's not wise unless you need to sneakily take things out from long range. I will admit though that the weapons all look great except for the shotgun to me. I don't know, this shotgun doesn't really look like a SPAS 12 anymore. I know what you mean. It feels too big and whereas that might make it feel more like a shotgun, it also makes it feel less like the type of shotgun that it is. But alas, this is your typical Half-Life affair when it comes to gameplay, but how does the level design hold up? So Black Mesa's level design is a lot different than you'd expect. It's not a complete recreation of Half-Life 1, and that can be a detrimental or a positive change. But it is indeed awesome to see a familiar area and see it get a complete makeover. But I enjoyed myself when the architecture of the levels was altered the least, and this is the case because Valve knew what the fuck they were doing when it came to level design. Like that one part in Surface Tension where you can go to all sorts of different openings to attack the soldiers. The fact that they weren't aware of your presence was really important. Now in Black Mesa, they're aware of you from the get-go and that sense of choice is gone and it becomes just another generic combat encounter. I know what you mean there, but that mechanic was cool in the way it affected the fight in the lobby right before service tension that was on the original Half-Life. That being said, the mechanic is still quite annoying. I'm not saying it's all bad. Some good things were added to make the levels a lot more enjoyable. Zen in particular. But a lot of these levels in Black Mesa just feel bloated, like some are just overly long and they never took me as long as they did in the original Half-Life. I do think that the levels benefit from having more detail in them and that's always nice, but again, Valve was always way better at designing fun levels, but Zen is the real show here. I know entirely what you mean, but I think that Half-Life came from a time of shorter levels, more puzzles, and tons of combat, and Black Mesa's levels are better from a more modern standpoint. That being said, both are fun. 
I can understand Valve having to make the levels shorter to account for hard disk space, but Black Mesa's levels felt completely overkill, especially during Zen, which caused my computer to have a seizure and the frame rate jug tremendously. The first two chapters of Zen are fine, they have a decent length to them and they don't feel that bloated, but Interloper is where it all starts to fall apart. The first bits of it were really cool, being able to see parts of the Vortigaunt's culture, but going up to the top with those damn conveyor belt puzzles was just tedious. I will admit that one part where you have to haul ass from the gargantuas was really intense and fun. But the rest of Interloper is fucking boring! I know what you mean, Interloper felt more like a lore chapter than anything, and probably could have replaced every Zen chapter leading up to it, but if we're talking about all of Zen, I quite enjoyed it, and it was certainly 100 times better than Half-Life Zen. Oh yeah, totally. Zen in Black Mesa is leagues better than Half-Life Zen, but the point stands, Interloper took me over an hour to beat without taking breaks in between. That was constant playing, which is just lame. Yeah, Zen is really impressive, and we'll get to that later, but the levels in this game are more or less an improvement from the first game. On a rail is way shorter, thank god. This is all really good stuff, but it does go on a bit too long for its own good. I still really love every level, but I think the levels should have been tweaked to be a little less monotonous. As someone who played through Interloper till the end, then the game left beta and had to replay it again, I completely agree with everything you just said about it. On the subject of the monotony of the levels, I think they mostly made up for it in the presentation of music. Okay, so this is the best the Source engine has ever looked. Texture quality is much better than Half-Life 2 and Portal 2. Also, the Half-Life art style was much improved upon, making this game have some gorgeous set pieces, and Zen looks absolutely stunning. So much so that this game caused my computer to lag. My computer in no way is bad, but this computer is not a lag from a Source Engine game computer. But performance aside, the game is still gorgeous looking. On the subject of the Source Engine, I'd like to point out really quick that I feel the Source Engine is less aimed towards immersion and more aimed towards gameplay, and as a player, it just feels better to use. Although it has a game world, it makes less sense, all in all I think it's better. Now that that bit is said, back to the subject of presentation. It may lag quite a bit, but for those of us with $1,000 computers who can run it well, it looks like a dream. Dude, you have an RTX 2060, while I have a GeForce GTX 980 Ti, which is a good GPU, and it can run almost anything I throw at it. It's either this game is unoptimized, or it's my RAM, but my specs aside, this game looks damn impressive, even if I have some frame rate issues during some of the more hectic bits. I still mostly got 60 frames per second, so I'm not knocking this game for lagging because that's most likely my problem. Yep, it's a gorgeous game that's like Crisis to run. Well, the Source Engine is better optimized than CryEngine 2, so moving on. Black Mesa has music that sounds so undoubtedly Half-Life that it even out Half-Life's Half-Life. I dare you to save that five times fast. Joel Nielsen did a fantastic job at making the soundtrack for this game, that it's hard pressed not to put him up with the musical gods of the gaming industry, like, seriously. Like that one part when you're in the lobby in Questionable Ethics. I love that part, but I also love the music when you first loaded into Zen. I mean, it was absolutely beautiful. Or that one part where your finger is glued to the shift key as you haul ass away from those gargantuas in Zen.
remember that. That was fun, but don't forget about the song from the beginning. The music in this game is fucking incredible. I enjoy it so much that it comes very close to Kelly Bailey's work. Like, good job, Joel. All in all, Black Mesa is a great game. It's a must-play for any fan of first-person shooters and Half-Life fans alike. Black Mesa isn't a perfect game, but the Crowbar Collective have really outdone themselves on this one. A decade later, and here we are with a damn near perfect recreation of the original Half-Life. As far as I'm concerned, this is as good as we're going to get for Half-Life games. Agreed. I loved Black Mesa. In the end, it is by no means disappointment and truly honors the Half-Life name. Who knows what the future will hold a decade or a century from now for the Half-Life games. Anyway, I can't wait to find out what I can. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, this has been Skeptical Rowan. And this is ETH's Push for Gamer. Wishing you a fantastic night, and take care.